Wait, oh. I've already made the biggest beginner mistake that every keyboard beginner makes. So you bought a custom keyboard. Here's how you should build it. Howdy hey, I'm Hippio Tech, and I looked at over 40 keyboards last year. So I'm gonna walk you through some of my keyboard building mistakes <laughs> live. If you happen to just buy a custom keyboard, you might be wondering, hey, how do I build it? Hippio, what do I do? I have these switches and I have these keycaps and I have these stabilizers and there's lube. What is going on? How do I do this? Well, hey, don't worry. You're in the right place. So in this video, I'm going to be building the TG67 from Kinetic Labs. It's a mid-range keyboard and I'll also be using some amazing pre-lubed switches that we'll talk about later, but keep those in mind as they might save you hours of time. I'll be going over how to loop stabilizers, how to put in switches, and how not to look like a bit of an idiot. If any of that sounds interesting, then stick around. Speaking of sticking around, 69% of you haven't subscribed yet, so if you want to stick around, hit that subscribe button. All right, so the first thing we're greeted by is the PCB. This keyboard comes with a hot swap PCB. It also appears to be very thin. So I'm wondering if my stabilizers are going to work with it. We're gonna have to figure something out for this later. But it is a hot swap PCB, meaning that when you build it, you do not need to solder or desolder. Now, one thing I'm looking for, for this keyboard is a more premium building experience. What does that mean? That means that hopefully I don't hate my life while I build it. Now I don't really hate my life when I build keyboards in general, but you know what I mean? Like if it sucks to build, does that mean it's more premium or does that mean it's just more copium? I see one sheet of foam for the back of the PCB and we'll talk about the foams that are included more later as we get to them. Literally, this is me when PCB no hot swap. No hot swap? You know, like the Megamind meme? You guys, you guys get that reference? You guys get the reference, right? If you're watching this video in April, odds are this desk mat is for sale at kineticlabs.com. It comes in at $23.99 and you can check it out with the link down below. I see what appears to be a polycarbonate plate. Does it have gamer lights? I see LEDs, but whether or not those are epic RGB gamer lights, who knows? So we have foam that's going to go between the plate and PCB, which will help dampen our typing experience a little bit, and a little bit of the foam you put on top of your, your PCB. This also appears to be a lot of gaskets. And this is actually where I get a little bit annoyed. These are my least favorite type of gasket of all time. These are just your standard pour on foam gaskets, but they're the ones you have to peel. Next. Ooh, <laughs> that is pretty. Just first impression, like that's a really nice finish. That is a really nice finish. She is purple. Ooh, wow. Oh, he's so cute. Howdy, hey. Yeah, overall impressions, this finish is really good. I don't know what it is. It's aluminum, some aluminum. Mmm, it feels great though. Hefty, but not too heavy. It also includes a cable. It's not a great cable, but it, it it's a cable. For the stabilizers, I've got these. These are Duroc V2s. They were also picked up from Kinetic Labs. When building the TG67, you actually absolutely need to get stabilizers with these little pads because the PCB is a thinner PCB. Apparently, if you don't use these pads, your stabilizers are gonna rattle around a ton. So it's stabilizer lubing time. Woo yeah. When lubing stabilizers, you need two things, paper towels and lube. The reason why you need paper towels is because you're gonna get lube all over your hands. Now let's talk about lubing stabilizers. How I lube stabilizers is I get a little bit of lube on my brush and then I lube the inside of the stabilizer housing. Then I take the stem with the two holes facing the little clip side of the stabilizer housing like this, push it in. Now we'll get back to this guy in a second, but we're gonna lube the housings first. <laughs> Yeah. Now, the next part of lubing your stabilizers is you want to take your wire. Then you want to take a decent glob of lube like this and glube it on the wire. Glube is a real term, by the way. I just invented it. Then you take your glubed wire and you just plop it in. Now just do the next side. And then boom, we've got one stabilizer looped. What this does is this makes it so your keyboard, when you hit the space bar, for example, it doesn't rattle and it feels nice and smooth. It's something that takes roughly 15 to 20 minutes of effort and will make your keyboard sound and feel better for years until you have to do it again. So now with our stabilizers lubed, it's time to actually install them. Ooh, yeah. Installing your stabilizer seems really daunting at first, but it's actually not that bad. On a board like this, it's a little bit harder, but on your average board with a thicker PCB, all you have to do is screw them in. I've never had to use these things on a board, actually. I've never built a board with this thin of a PCB. For the stabilizers, you have to install these little flaps, and uh, they definitely suck to install, but they're necessary. 
I did it. Now I just have to screw in the stabilizers. Wait, oh. I've already made the biggest beginner mistake that every keyboard beginner makes. The mistake has already been made. You guys guess what it is? Forgot the foam. Forgot the foam. Every time I build a keyboard, I get my PE foam and I set it to the side. What you should do is put it on before the stabilizers. Ah, I could just cut. I could just cut it. Nobody tell anyone that I just did that. Don't tell, you don't see anything. Guys, it's like nothing ever happened. You see that? It's like nothing ever happened. You see how beautifully pristine this is? As if I didn't forget to apply the foam. It doesn't even look like it's cut. Maybe I won't even tell YouTube. If you're watching this right now on YouTube and you see this, oops, the editor left it in. Let's go back to installing our stabilizers. Now with the stabilizers installed, we've got the boring part, the build over. And it's time to get to the fun part, the switches. Yeah. Now, when picking your switches, you can pick a switch that you need to lube yourself, but I'm gonna be looking at a switch that's a little bit more revolutionary. Now, to prep our board for the switches, all I'm going to do is place down the foam that's gonna go in between the plate and the PCB, and then I'm just going to add on the plate. This is a polycarbonate plate, so the board overall is gonna have a deeper sound profile, but polycarbonate's also the only option for this board, so it's not like we had a choice. Now for the switches. I mentioned using switches that were a little bit revolutionary. These are the Moon V2s from Kinetic Labs and Agile. These are an incredibly interesting switch because they've been factory lubed, but by hand. That means that hopefully we won't need to spend hours and hours lubing these switches and that theoretically they will feel and sound smooth, but I'm gonna be putting that to the test as claims are often not experiences. So with all of your switches in, you have a couple different options. You could put your keycaps on, but in this case, I'm actually going to get the gaskets ready because you gotta do the worst part in the middle. So to get the gaskets ready, we first have to open up the keyboard. To open this thing up, we've got a bunch of screws on the bottom right next to this cute little hippio guy. So we're just gonna have to undo those. So now with the bottom unscrewed, we can just boop, take the top off. And now this leads us to the case. The case is in two separate pieces, as you can see, or three if you count the weight. It's got these little recessed spots for the gasket. I'm gonna apply the gaskets directly to the case here. We've done it. We've got all of the gaskets installed. This board, in order to preserve the USB-C port and some of the gasket flex, has a daughter board. Now, what's a USB daughter board? Well, it basically just separates the USB-C. That way, you know, you don't put strain on your PCB, etc. blah, blah, blah. Next, I just plug in this little cable, then we just screw it in. Next, to assemble the board, you've gotta just plop on this bad boy. I'm just gonna plug in this little cable right here. Let's go ahead and put this back on and then screw everything in. Let me show you the most important part of this whole entire video. This is Polycap's Hippo. You might think, Hippo, that is just a box that looks very cute and says Hippo on it. Well, in fact, you are wrong. This is my keycap set my keycap set. So anything I say about this is incredibly biased. Just so you know, just super biased, super ultra biased. I will never be more biased in my life except talking about my keycap set. One of the best keycap sets. Look at this on the back. Look at this art. Beautiful, lovely box. This is a PBT keycap set that you can get for $79.99 from kineticlabs.com. It is an in stock keycap set. Look at these beautiful keycaps here. You guys see this? You guys see how beautiful this is? Um, anyways, you can check it out with the with the link down below. Let's put on our first keycap. Boop. And now we're gonna put on all of the rest. That's pretty nice. All right, let me give you a quick little sound test. So, not a lot there. It isn't a stiff typing experience without the foam, but it isn't like knock your butt off. After checking it out without the foam, let's flip it around, let's undo it, and let's add some foam. All right, hi, Nola. So next, I'm just gonna plop this back on. Let's do a quick little sound test. This is a sound test with the foam. Yeah, I think overall my impressions are these moon switches are really good. Um, and the TG67 is a very specific sound profile. If you're looking for deep and thocky, the QK65 is gonna beat it out by miles. If you're looking for a clackier, more, I guess like full aluminum sound, then the TG67 is, is 
going to do that for you. I think overall, like taking into account the price of this thing at 280 ish bucks. It's something that a few people might want, but it's definitely not a keyboard for everyone. With budget offerings like the QK65 providing what some might say is better sound, it's definitely a hard sell, but some might like it simply because of the aesthetics. All right, mid cut moment. This board has RGB. Did I mention it has RGB? This is epic RGB gamer time. I take back everything I said about this board. It's perfect. This is now a 69 out of five. But what do you think? I'm curious of your guys' thoughts. Let me know down below. Would you build this board?